Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. We're going to talk today about a little bit of a stall, whether it's in fat loss or weight gain. But before we hop in the video, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on iTunes, 50% Facts, new podcast every Wednesday. And we're twitching live, live streaming every single night. So come hang out, link in the bio, Silent Mike on Twitch. I got a user submitted question or comment and my man basically said, I don't, I don't have the exact quote, I lost it somewhere in the mix of the social media world, but he basically digs in and says, Mike, I've been eating a boatload and I can't gain weight. If I do gain weight, I want to gain muscle and not fat. Help me out. My man, <clears throat> I'm here to help you out. And it's quite simple, actually. You know, a lot of people ask similar like questions, but they're leaving out much of the picture and much of the variables that we need to define if we want to make consistent progress, steady progress, and be sure that we're gonna make progress. It's great to throw things on the wall, and some people can. Some people can just eat whatever they want, train a little bit, and they get really jacked. For the majority of us, it's not gonna work that way and we gotta be a little bit more precise with the procedures we do, the information we give out and how we attack our goals. People ask all the time, Mike, I'm squatting three times a week and I plateaued my squat. There's so many more variables involved with this, whether we're talking about the squat or we're talking about gaining weight or losing weight that we need to control in order to make adjustments, in order to continue to progress. So in the fact that we're trying to gain weight, let's hypothetically say we've been training about two years. We're about 160 pounds. Our lifts have stalled a little bit, the scale has stalled a little bit, or maybe we're not even checking the scale, and my body, my physique, and my strength has stalled. So what are some things that we can track every single day to make sure of it? If you're, say you're eating a boatload and you're not gaining weight, you're not eating enough. That's just pure fact. Thermogenics, if you're not, if you're eating enough, you're gonna gain weight. If you're not eating enough, you're gonna lose weight. Simple as that. If you're eating at maintenance, you're gonna maintain your weight. And the only way we can really track these things are, are, are simple. We're gonna track our body weight every day or every other day. We're gonna write it down. First thing in the morning, wake up, take a PP, and then you're gonna write it down. Um, use the same scale, wear the same things, whether you're just using underwear or whatever you wanna do. Mark it down every single day, either on your phone or sometimes it helps to physically write it for us to remember and keep track of. I used to keep, when I was really dieting, a piece of paper right next to my scale, sign in, date it, wait, bada boom, bada bing. The next thing we want to do is, is, is strictly track your food. And I suggest everyone does this for at least six months to an entire year. Get some kind of measuring cups and get some kind of food scale. Sometimes the food scale can handle it all. And weigh and measure and track in an app similar to MyFitnessPal, which is free. I'm not sponsored. It's just easy to use. And track it in your phone, weigh it on the scale before you put it in your mouth. Sometimes it'll help to track an entire day ahead of time if you like kind of the prep idea. Um, you track, you know, the night before, um, you track the day before every single meal and make sure that your macronutrients line up. Uh, if you don't have any macronutrient goals or calorie goals, we'll figure that out as we go. But basically, track everything you eat, weigh yourself every day, and see what it's like. If you're averaging, you know, after seven days, your body weight's the same, and then you average your calorie intake, and you're averaging around 2,000 calories, now we need to eat 2,225 or 2,500 calories if we want to gain weight. Uh, hopefully, if you're gaining muscle, uh, we're gonna be have to do some kind of training program. Uh, you need to add some stimulus to your muscles if you want them to grow with the extra calories. Now, also, if you're trying to gain a little bit more muscle and less body fat, and less body fat when you bulk, although you're likely to gain both, it's just how our bodies work. It's going to be very difficult to gain no body fat while you're gaining weight. We're going to need a good program with a good amount of volume, a hair frequency in there. Uh, and we're also going to need uh, to up our protein intake. Typically what we want to do is about a gram of protein per pound of body weight we weigh. So if you're 160 again, training two years, uh, we want to eat about 160 grams of protein. And then how much fat and carbs we have to get to the 2,500 calories. Again, these are all examples. I'm just throwing out numbers. These are not recommendations on calorie intake or anything like that. But it's a general guide. <clears throat> you get 2,500 calories in and 160 of that from uh, protein uh, grams and then the rest you can kind of fill in carbs and fat. Um, and then we're gonna continue to, to weigh ourselves on the scale every morning, every other morning, write it down. And once we plateau again, we're gonna add a little bit more calories involved. So now we're 165 pounds, we've been t eating 2,500 calories and we've plateaued again. Now we're gonna go to uh, 2,600, 2,750 uh, calories and continue the progress until we're at the end of our bulk or at the physique we like, and then we figure it out. Now dieting is the exact same thing. There's so many fad diets going around. There's so many uh, information being thrown left and right. And if we're talking about purely fat loss, purely fat loss, um, weight loss, what's going to 
determine that overall is how many calories we intake. So it's gonna be the exact same process. We're gonna weigh ourselves every day, we're gonna write it down, we're gonna track our food and weigh our food every single day before we put it in our mouth, and we're gonna keep those calories consistent, and as soon as we plateau, we're gonna just take a little bit of calories away or add a little bit of cardio. Burning extra calories will have the same effect as eating slightly less, and that'll allow us to continue this progress over time. Now, it seems so simple because it absolutely is. Now, the most difficult part of this whole thing is the discipline, and staying consistent on the athlete themselves. The, 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 the science is simple, the procedure is simple, many people have done it over and over and over. Now, the, 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 the trouble is the adherence to stick to it over years and years and find a method that works for you. That's, I guess, if you want a place for these fad diets or different things that are people are buzzwording around, that's where a place that it may help because some people may do better with a slightly less carbs and slightly higher fat. And when I say do better, it's not because of physiologically, magically, they do better when they eat bacon than when they eat turkey bacon. I don't think that's the case in any instance. What it is is that some people find a little bit more pleasure or a little bit more adherence when they eat slightly higher fats. They stay more satiated. They're not as hungry when they're eating that bacon opposed to someone who's eating a lower fat diet. But then there's the opposite. There's plenty of people that are very satiated and happy mentally and physically when they're eating a high amount of carbs and a little bit lower fat. So those are the things that you're gonna mess around with. Once we get about a gram per pound of protein in your system and we get that consistency going, do maybe four weeks of you know maybe a moderate carb, a little bit lower fat, figure that out. If you feel great, continue doing it, that's great. Find consistency, find some foods to match your lifestyle, to match your training, to fat, match your palate and your satiation. And if that doesn't work, then we'll adjust that. Maybe we go a little bit lower carb and we go moderate fat and we figure out what works for you. For me, adherence wise, uh, it, it helps a lot to have a little, you know, moderate fat, moderate uh, carb for me. And then I keep my protein pretty high. It's just what keeps me satiated, allows me to have balance in my life if I wanna go out to eat and eat with some friends, if I wanna have a glass of wine here and there. Allows me to stick to the script while continuing progress. Do me a favor, comment below any questions, topics you want me to cover. I'll try to help you out the best I can. Give this thing a thumbs up again. I'll see you guys on Twitter. New video dropping here every Monday and Thursday. I appreciate you guys. I'm Mike. I'm out of here.